What's happening, sports fans? We got another great top recruit to talk to right now. This one, Griffin Geringer from Scripps Ranch. He is going to go play volleyball at Cal Lutheran. I think I see the top of a Cal Lutheran shirt there. Uh, oh, okay. Very nice. The, the Kingsmen. Um, the, the the Lakers colors, the royalty colors. He's got the chain on. We're I feel like we're talking to a champion right now. Uh, so thank you so much for being on with us. Why Cal Lutheran? Uh, so one of my top priorities was staying in California for college, and my best friend, his sister, was going there and telling me about it. And so I decided to go there and see what it's like, and I fell in love with the campus and the coaching style, and I really wanted to go there, so I made it happen. So it sounds like basically this is best-case scenario that everything really has worked out for you exactly. You found kind of the home for everything that you were looking for. Yes? No? Yeah, of course. So uh, I really put my, like, focused on like making this my goal and making it happen for myself because uh, I really wanted to play sports in college. I knew that from when I was growing up and uh, seeing this opportunity, I decided to you know work for it and make it happen. So I was really excited to have that. So talk to us then about the emotions of when it all did finally come together. Was there one moment where it really clicked and you're like, hey, this is the Cal Lutheran is my spot. This is my jam. Was it just kind of a buildup of things and it just ended up feeling right? What, what was that final deciding moment like for you? Yeah. So uh, I went to a summer camp, which was the first time I actually went to the campus. And as soon as I stepped foot in the gym and I was starting to like talk to all the guys, I sort of realized then that this is like the type of family, you know, brotherhood style of team, like being on a team that I want to, I want to have. And over that summer camp, I just realized that this should be my home for the next four years. You talk about the summer camp. I feel like we talked to a lot of you guys through the, the lens of being high school sports athletes, but it, it doesn't stop there for you. This is a, a year-long or multiple seasons-long extra travel in the off-season, all sorts of time that you've put in probably since you were a little kid. So I'm sure this is more than just four years' worth of weight off your shoulder, but this kind of feels like a lot of extra work and, and sacrifice went into something really special here for you. Yeah, um, so I was I was a little behind the curve because I really started playing volleyball freshman year, and I, I'd been playing sports before then, but freshman year I really started playing volleyball and getting into it. So I was a little behind the curve of all the rest of the guys playing because they've been playing since they were uh, you know a little younger, and so I just get in the gym as much as possible and you know do workouts with um, higher level players and try and just make my way into the into the group of, of better players. So how did how did it click for for you then? What was the moment or what was the part of or like why did volleyball end up sticking with you? Uh so growing up I was I was a wrestler and I started, you know, playing that doing those things and so I kind of fell out of love with, you know, wrestling and I, I was going to say it seems like there's no correlation there. One is very flat to the ground, one is very high up in the air. Yeah, so I, I just when I, it was a very big change and that I really enjoyed it and I just found like a lot more opportunities with it and I you know, I kept growing so I was, you know, tall enough to start playing volleyball and I just had a lot more fun with it and so yeah. Now, I think that a lot of people see or think or hear volleyball and it goes immediately to beach volleyball, sun and sand and diving, but the indoor court version of this game is fast paced, a lot of action, and decently, not, I'm not going to necessarily say dangerous, but there, you, you end with some bumps and some bruises, and you got to get out of the way of the occasional kill shot. So, talk to us a little bit about maybe the misunderstood intensity of, of a really high level volleyball match. Yeah. So, as I was saying, like I was, I was getting into the gym with the high level players, and I started realizing like how, how fast paced everything was happening, and you know, your mind's spinning in all different directions trying to keep track of everyone else on the court. And you got to be aware of everyone else, you know, where everyone's moving and things like that. And the ball moves pretty fast. So it's just something you get used to. It's like pretty intense, uh, like getting in, in long rallies and everything like that. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty intense. I love asking athletes that, you know, I didn't play your sport. I, what is the part of it that you're like singularly, that's the, that's the pinnacle feeling, you know, a, equivalent to a touchdown or a home run or something like that. What in volleyball is that for you? Um, best feeling, probably just getting either a really, really big block, like straight down, stuff the guy, or a really big kill, like straight down, hitting the ball straight down, something like that. But not either way, it's the straight down, back in someone's face, return to yeah. sender type mentality. Um, yeah. are, are you able to feel it on a really good kill, like off, right off the hand? Like if I had you blindfolded, you could still feel it like, oh, that was that went straight down, that went right where I wanted it. Because to me, it's just a randomly, you're just kind of swinging at the ball. And, and, and that, you know, from the outsider's perspective, can you, do you have that kind of feel for the sport? Is, does it work that way? 
yeah so like when you get up in the air you like you, you hit a ball a ton of times when you're like playing volleyball obviously so as you're getting more reps you get the better feel of like how you're gonna put yourself up in the air and, and hit the ball so like you can contact it you can feel like when you're gonna contact it at a good spot and and hit it at a better pace you know what i'm saying so yeah, you kind of get the feel for how when a hit's gonna be good compared to a bad hit um Volleyball has a uh, a decent parallel to basketball in that you get home court advantage in some places. Some gyms are harder to play at. Some gyms are more fun to play at. So I'm sure that playing at home in front of, I believe it's called the cage, is your student section. What what has that experience been like for the last four years for you? Um, so, yeah, I was uh, pulled up to varsity as a sophomore, and it was really fun because I was playing with like a bunch of the older guys and I've seen a lot of the older kids like uh, come support the school and it was really fun like being around the crowd and having the excitement of when we're doing well and you know like playing well as a team and so this is our last year obviously I was a, I'm a senior um, and so all of our, our like, closest friends were coming to our games and it was really good to see them in the stands like supporting us because we were supporting them for their sports and things like that so it was really exciting to see that. What's a uh, what's a good road place to play? Either because the crowd really knows how to cheer, and you're like, that's fun to play against them, or just the gym is nice. What 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 is a road gym that you enjoy getting a W in? Uh, Poway. I think I said Poway is a good, a good school to go play at. It was pretty fun playing against those guys. <clears throat> you mentioned that people were coming out to your senior year, but ultimately everybody, no matter if you got one or five, everyone got robbed of a senior season this year. So I mean. I know that's kind of a clunky, sad transition to a question, but what emotionally, mentally, what have the last two months been like for you? Yeah, so uh, the day before everything got canceled was our last game, and we were we were going out to the it was to the school that we were playing at, and we were just we were talking, and we we're like, this could be our last game, so let's let's make everything that we can do happen, you know, let's put all of our heart into the court and leave everything out on the court, and so I think that's what we did, and it was really it was really tough to have like the season end so quickly like that we, we had such a good vision for the rest of the season we were getting so excited we just got new jerseys and it all got cut short which was uh, really tough to go through did you get to wear all of the new jerseys no we didn't so they came in the day that everything got canceled and it really sucks because i was the one that that designed them and i was really excited to see them come in and it was like my do you, wait, wait 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 do you at least have them here with you at your house no, unfortunately we do not yeah. oh so, no okay who does the coach have them? How can we somehow, if you can hit up your coach for a photo of them, we'd love to include them here in the interview just so we can get them publicly out there because it, if you design them, they deserve some some run, some attention. So uh, please let us yeah. know if your coach can pass along a photo that. Um, I have a photo of uh, me and my friends holding up our jerseys. Oh, today. deal. Then, then you can pass along the photo. We'll, we'll, we'll throw that up on the screen right here in the interview so everyone can check that out because uh, right. if you design those, we, we want to show those bad boys off. Um, I see the chain right now. So obviously you have a little, a little bit of fit, a little, little sense for that. Uh, are you allowed to play with that kind of stuff in a volleyball game? Because I know uh, that like baseball players are known for like underneath those things. You're like, how do you run with all of that? Is, is that an on court dis decision that you would like to have? Um, so for high school sports, you're not allowed to have chains or jewelry, any of that stuff. But I think as a, you go to the college level, they don't really mind it as much. So. Yeah. So are we going to start to see maybe like for every block, the chain gets a little bigger and a little heavier? Like, is this going to be something by senior year? You're going to just have like the way Miami has a turnover chain. You're going to have like the block chain. <laughs> it might happen. I mean, we'll have to see. It depends on how the years go. Uh, what's the Cal Lutheran's mascot? Or the, the, uh, the Kingsman. The Kingsman. Somehow we need to get like a Kingsman medallion for you. And then like you put a different diamond in it for every, uh, block or, or every kill or something like that something funny some, something yeah, something silly like uh, that. you can't take sports too seriously all the time yeah uh, what have you been up to in your downtime um so i've been waking up doing a workout and then you know hanging out through the day and doing helping around the house and then relaxing through the night and watching netflix and things like that so i mean I, I like have you picked up the guitar now or are you doing puzzles have you started like there's you, there has to be something that you at least tried to be like i'm gonna do this during during quarantine what what, what Please tell. Uh, so I'm interested in uh, like I have a drone, so I, I've been flying that around and like making drone edits with like my my clips that I have, and I think that's really fun that I've been doing. What's the learning curve on how to be how to get good at flying a drone? Um, it's pretty. It helps you out a lot. It it honestly tells you a lot of what to do and how like how things are working out. So it was not that hard. So so there there weren't like five or six drones that you crashed in because I feel like if I got mine I'd immediately look up at it and be like, "Oh, that's so cool." And then I wouldn't look where I'm going. 
uh, yeah. just knowing my love. Is there a horror story of a drone crash in your history that you can tell us? Um, nothing that I've crashed, but one time when I got the drone, when I first got the drone, I let my grandpa fly it, and he flew it into a tree, and it was very devastating, so I thought it broke. And nice. It, it was good, but nice. scary, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my baby! No! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, is is the interest in drones something, like, long-term, or are we talking to a future, you know, Air Force drone pilot? Like, is it going to be something that, is that a passion for you in life, or is that just a fun hobby? Uh, it's just a hobby I've been thinking about, but I, I definitely have thought about, you know, like going into like the Air Force drone section of, of, of life, but it's, it's just, it's an option I'm keeping open, but I'm, I'm trying to go into law. Or just, oh, oh, you're trying to go into law. Very cool. So uh, what kind of law, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, corporate law. So I want to be like a big, a big lawyer for like Tesla or Apple, or like that's the main vision quest that I have right now. Uh, my best friend from high school is on the legal team for J.P. Morgan or Merrill Lynch or one of those and d does that kind of stuff where I'm, like, talking to him, like, okay, so you're not going to be, like, you're not going to be defending a murder. You're not going to be in court ever. You're just going to be sitting at home going over documents and double checking corporate legislation. And he's like, yeah, but the thing is they'll put me on a case for 10 years to litigate it out and I'll never have to worry about job security. And I just get yeah. to work from home and I don't have to do the stress of like, or I, you know, I get an office, but I don't have to go to court and all that kind of stuff. And he's the happiest guy in the world. So it sounds like you've got yourself kind of figured out for something fun. Uh, how do you end up wanting to do that though? Um, well, I've been told a lot that I like arguing and I do, I feel like I do. No, like you arguing. don't. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i've been told a lot that i like arguing i do, i think i do as well and i just think it's interesting to go into law and, and study you know all types of how the world works you know like the adult way i guess so okay fair enough fair enough um i i just ask because not a lot of kids that we talk to in these interviews have their life planned out let alone have been told always that they're going into the right profession uh for them yeah. personally but perhaps a stop on uh, you know in the pro volleyball circuit or at least the olympic circuit circuit before into law school and all that uh, will be in griffin's stop at least what we know now is for the next four years he's going to be representing all of us really, really well at the next level. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your time with us. Yeah, this course. is the part of the interview where we close it out by saying, hey, stay at least six feet away from this kid, but give him a round of applause, a salute, a pat on the back, whatever it is, some well wishes, and thanks for entertaining all of us with your athleticism in the last couple of years, and best of luck at the next level. Sports fans, stay safe, stay indoors, stay sending good wishes and well thoughts to, to these high school seniors that got their season ended early, and we will talk to you guys next time.